right guys, decon wash time. So what I think the plan's gonna be is I'm gonna rinse this down. And because of how bad the car is, this is glass so I can't touch it. Um, because of how bad the car is, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a very light layer of um, a citrus pre-cleaner through a spray bottle. I'm gonna pretty much hit the whole car, not just the lower parts. And then I'm gonna cover it in a thick blanket and a foam rinse it off and then we will assess the paint but then what i will 100 percent do is i'll reform the car with some yum wash so that just to add more lubricity at the end of the day this car is black yes it's getting a heavy compounding but the last thing i want to do is add any more damage than is already on the car so the yum wash you will see will add some crazy lubrication we, we are actually going to use the new wash pad so for the first time you're going to see its performance it's pure and it's a perfect weight so we've been as I mentioned on the previous videos, it's um, we've tried to make it too heavy, too light, but I think now it's just the right weight as well, where it holds just enough suds, but not in too much where you know a child can't hold it. So let's get going with the pre-rinse. So I'm going to use the short gun for now. I'll put the lance on at a later stage. So the car's been sat underground as well, so I want to try and get rid of some of the dust that's on top of the winter dirt that's already on there. Now see, it's got some glass plus on there. It's been on for about a month now, but you could see even after two weeks of no washing, look at the repellency power. And that's, and that's when it's dirty as well. So it will increase the repellency power even more. And it's clean. So my biggest gripe with people when I see them on YouTube pressure washing, and this is some of the professionals as well, they'll literally do this, especially once rinsing the form out, or wheel cleaner, or in this case, um, I'm doing a pre-wash. Now, pressure washers use a lot less water than a traditional hose. Everybody knows that, well, or they should know that, but, to counteract and to try to put as much water as possible, you need to, it's my opinion, it's the way I do it, but you put more water, rather than keeping it like that and it's done, look, I'm doing a few more passes, and what that does, that forces more water into the cracks to try and flush everything, because at the end of the day, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to flush all the gaps with as much water as possible. Especially when you're wheel cleaning, I see people just do a quick rinse and you can still see foam in the lug nuts or in the barrels, it's just a gripe of mine. Now just look at that beading, dirty. So again, two weeks worth of dust, dirt and it's still beading like a monster. So, I usually use citrus weather on for two reasons. One, in the summer, when there's ingrained pollen or bugs, mainly for the bugs. Or in this case, when you've got a really bad car and you want to try and give any foam a bite. Now, personally me, I would rather add 100 mil of the foam solution neat um, I would rather, I would much rather add 100 mil of the citrus solution, which is neat, to the snow foam cannon, so it, it aerates better that way. But again, I'm just trying a few different application methods and see if that makes a difference. So this is knocked 10 to 1. So if you don't know what that means, this is a one liter bottle. I've got 100 mil to 900 mil of water. So that makes a true one litre. So I'm just literally being as liberal as I can and putting it everywhere, especially focusing on the gaps. Now as well, I'm not going to be agitating the gaps when the foam's on, because this car's got full of dirt and you're just moving dirt around because it's got a little bit of foam on. 
people just seem to forget. Would you put a, a brush to this car now? Most likely not. So I'll carry a brush with me in my pocket and once the car's washed, or as I'm washing a certain part of the car, I will agitate it because of, because of then it's clean. And then I can just pressure wash the whole thing off. So again, being very liberal. I'm not just putting it on the low spots, literally putting it anywhere the mist will land. So another purpose of this is, and I will show you probably after I do this, but this is a decon wash. There's no chemical or product on the market that will strip the entire car. It's impossible. And if people tell you they have a product like this, they're lying to you. Now, what a decon product can do during a decon wash is you're trying to nail you're trying to nail as much of the protection off. Now, when you're talking real ceramic, so resin delivered ceramic, you've got absolutely no chance. You need to polish it, sometimes sand it. But when you're talking paste sealants, paste waxes, sealants, liquid sealants, ceramic sealants, which are water-based, you can start to really degrade them if you know what you're doing. Now, the reason for this is, is when you start to polish a car, the last thing you want to do is have a ton of contaminants, protective elements, all of that sort of stuff, start getting embedded into the car. Or start getting embedded into the actual pad because that's gonna interfere with the work that you're doing with the, with the polisher. So if you can get 50, 60% of the stuff off, then why not? It just helps you. And in the process, it reduces the potential of your of your wash pad starting to scratch or etch the paint because like i said that's the last thing you want to do is add any more damage so that's the whole car covered see i've still got another 200 mil left in here so it's not too bad really saturated petrol cap Now you'll see, even though this is a fairly average dilution of citrus, I mean, citrus is a fairly alkaline product anyway, but this won't even strip any of the protection that's on here. But hopefully it'll knock it down 5-10%. Now I've mixed the Yum Foam to a slightly stronger solution. So I've got 250 mil in here. So 250 mil, 750 of water. And that's because if you start mixing foams wrong, like I've just have, it's got a tendency to start to strip protection. So that's the whole goal. well now I mean it's not too warm but the panel temperatures are starting to increase a little bit because it's in direct sunlight but you want it to let it dwell for as long as you possibly can and it'll start eating into the protection so I've just rinsed it and reapplied yum wash through a cannon I just cut out a step which you don't really need to see me do again so this is the new wash pad this will be really interesting. So I'm just gonna put it in there just to saturate it with water. And as always, I recommend doing this just to refresh the bucket as best you can. So I've, I've dumped the rest of the solution into the bucket.
this should make for a very sudsy wash. Always look after your kit as well. Right, first wash with a new wash pad. Let's go. Oh yeah, <laughs> I love wash pads. Absolutely love them. Now, like I said on the previous video, when I was unpacking the cabinets, because this holds so much water, especially when you're on a horizontal panel, so the roof, the boot, stuff like that, it just glides so nice. And when you're on a vertical panel like I am now, the weight of the pad, it just moves with you. So yeah, it's a very nice feeling. Now, when will these be out? Like I said, we're waiting for the bags or the packaging, that's a more better word for it. We're waiting for the packaging to clear the customs in the UK. I think we're in Manchester. Yeah, so the Manchester port. So as soon as they clear, and we can take the photos, which is the easy part. These will be in your hands, guys. But just look how much transfer of suds is just amazing. I've been chasing the pad like this for a long time. I love microfiber wash mitts pads in general, but I'll give you an example like the Rag Company one that I bought just to test. It was just too thick. And even I was struggling to keep a hold of it. And then some of them are too too thin and they end up kind of disintegrating a lot quicker so believe it or not there are many different style of wash pads now as you saw well in fact you didn't see this but you're going to see it after this we've got a yum ceramic layer on here that is about three Three month in now durability of a product like that realistically come on it doesn't matter because you're washing the car weekly and you're going to be topping it with a, a topping agent in this case you detailer so i do that weekly so i'm constantly adding say like one percent here one percent there now you didn't see this because i didn't do this on film but when i rinsed the foam off it was still repelling like crazy. Now again, the foam didn't take off all the dirt like it's not designed to. But after this, as well, so again, we've got a, a mixture of shampoo in the bucket, which adds to extra cleaning power. And you'll just see just how well it beads when it's clean. And don't forget guys, the Yum Ceramic was on a panel or paint that's not perfect I can quite happily admit that so the next stage I'm going to rinse this down again and we're going to follow up with a tar treatment an iron treatment rinse it again I'll probably foam it do a contactless foam and that's just to remove any remaining residue from the two chemical decon steps and then we're gonna go inside and I'm gonna do a mechanical clay which I'm gonna show you our very newest thing that I'm chasing lovely clay block so we're gonna clay that now the reason we're doing it inside and not out is because the lights starting to drop don't forget it's still January so it's early night now if the weather was like this and it was going to get dark at 6 7 pm i would have done it outside again that's the versatility of it and you can use a shampoo mixed in a spray bottle 
and then obviously you will have to rinse the car again just to get rid of the residue of the shampoo but in that case we're going to use a detail spray because that way we don't have to rinse it and then we'll follow up with an IPA wipe just to make sure everything's gone before we start doing our test spots just to see exactly which combination which true combination we'll have to do I think on this car we may have had a little bit of paint so I think a one true combination may not exist only because some paint will be softer than others or harder than others so yeah it will be interesting to see which sets of pads and polishes and compounds it will take to completely hammer this paint to perfection I'm looking forward to it and I'm not at the same time because I just realized that stay I'm going to show you guys after this yeah it's swirled yet yeah, scratched which is what I'm not worried about because I think to me that's fairly easy because at the end of the day the process is the same now what's going to be difficult is the fact that there's a film on the car which means the pads are going to get saturated really quick which means I've got to keep blowing them out more often and that's the part I'm actually not looking forward to because one there's going to be a lot more movement towards the air guns just to get rid of the residue and two it could just start impeding oh. mind you you know even I've done a maintenance iron removal in the summer I mean there I can feel some some grit probably tar um, so it's actually really slick but yeah there's going to be impeding polishing steps which again because of the film it may may not be the best in terms of time but then again I'm going to leave this car in the unit and I'll work around it because I've got other stuff I need to do so I'll work and film around a few hours a day because unfortunately the business never stops it never sleeps let's say so this car will have to be my little sanctuary at the end of each hard day so the tar and iron step it's going to be very hard to see it because again the car's black but we're just going to go through the motions i may even agitate the clay uh, the iron and the tar products with a microfiber towel to so just give the car a wipe over after it's had time to break it down and that's just because obviously you can tell the car's not been looked after the engine bays rats wheels are rats arches are rats so because you can't see it on a black car it doesn't mean it's not there I remember when I did the maintenance iron removal step in the summer when I rinsed it you could see the floor was just bleeding purple again it's a high performance car so that's expected I forgot to do this part of the rear window so I'll give it a thorough rinse and move on to the next steps I'm going to end this episode here guys so that way we can catch the full chemical and the mechanical decon on the next episode so Hopefully you've enjoyed me watching the car for the nine millionth time and I'll catch you in the next one.